a woman named Debbie Harlow came to Esalen. She wasn't in this month-long workshop, but she came to sell MDMA. And it was legal, and she spoke to some of the people in our group, and uh, several of them decided to buy it and try it. But when I heard about it, I wasn't very interested. You know, I was told, oh, it makes you feel good. And I was like, well, I feel good already. And they said, well, it helps you talk to other people. And I'm like, well, I can talk to other people. And then I watched a couple of people take it, and they just sat around talking to each other. And it was like they were present and logical and just having what seemed from the outside to be not much different than a normal conversation. And I was used to the fireworks of LSD and, you know, the um, hours where you couldn't even really talk. You know, one of my favorite albums from the 1960s is by David Crosby from Crosby, Stills, Nash & Young. And he has somebody from every group, uh, musical group in the Bay Area. And the album is called If I Could Only Remember My Name. <laughs> so that's what, you know, LSD was like. So when I heard about MDMA and then saw people doing it, it just seemed minor and trivial and unnecessary. But I had the wisdom to buy some anyway. <laughs> so um, then when I took some home and I did them uh, with my girlfriend for the first time and it was phenomenal. I didn't realize how totally profound it was and how it had this ability to help me integrate prior difficult psychedelic experiences that I'd had and that it felt real and genuine. I remember the uh, conversation with my girlfriend saying, you know, that this was us speaking. It wasn't the drug speaking, that it permitted us to be in touch with deeper aspects of ourselves or truer aspects of ourselves without a lot of noise and confusion. And so it felt genuinely real and the benefits lasted after time. It wasn't that we forgot what happened the next day. It really made fundamental, important, uh, changes in our relationship in terms of deepening it.